who will give you up. Never. The fact that you clicked on this video is proof that you are going to do so much better than I ever did with my pups. You are preemptively researching and making sure that you're ready for this. You didn't do any of that. So just remember, no matter what goes wrong in the future, and believe me, things will go wrong. Just know that you're their whole life. And no matter what you do, they're still gonna love you. And you're all that matters to them. So just take a minute, breathe, and just know it's gonna be okay. I could write a book on everything that I did not know before I got my two German Shepherds, Enzo and Lotus. But I want this video to be what I would maybe consider deal breakers. Things that if you don't know much about how varying different dog breeds can have personality traits and just different needs and requirements, knowing these things could make German Shepherds not on your short list. And that's okay, by the way. In fact, one of the best comments I ever got was from somebody saying like, I wanted nothing but a German Shepherd but I watched your videos and realized that I'm not in a place in my life where I can handle that. And that's okay, like I was so happy to hear that. I love when people are self-aware like that. I wish I would have had more self-awareness before I got them. I have adapted my life around that and not everybody's willing to do that like I was. I'm not saying this makes me better or worse or anything. It's just, I was willing to do that and you just need to be honest with yourself. Like, are you willing to do that? I would be hard pressed to think that a shepherd would easily fit into most people's lives. Uh, to be fair, I don't think a dog's gonna easily fit into anybody's lives, no matter what TV and movies make you believe. I think shepherds require more than a, some other breeds than you may realize. So let's get into the deal breakers, including after more than five years of having shepherds, I just learned a new one that I think will be a very big deal breaker for some of you. So let's get into it. First, let's talk about their personality, specifically FOMO. <sighs> Enzo has this way worse than Lotus and it's not uncommon with Shepherds. They don't do well alone. They don't like to be left alone and no, having two Shepherds doesn't make that okay. Um, you know, Enzo does not do well when he's left to the point that if I know I'm gonna be gone all day, like I will actually give him Trazodone. Uh, and even still, you know, he's broken doors. He's learned how to undo deadbolts. He's literally broken out of my house before on multiple occasions to the point that I had to like go out and find a Enzo proof deadbolt smart. And then I got a smart one so that if he somehow ever did crack it, like I would be alerted right away. He's broken gates, multiple gates and they can really hurt themselves in this process. You know, Enzo's 100 pounds. And honestly, half the time that I, when I block him out of a room, I just lean a baby gate up against the doorway. Like he's not even really blocked. Like if he just walked up and hit it, it would fall over. But he doesn't, he's like, whatever. Okay, you don't want me in there? That's fine, I will respect that. When he knows I'm leaving, that's, like I said, that's a whole different ball game. And the biggest fear is that he's going to hurt himself. So that's why, like I hate having to medicate him, but it's a legitimate fear. There are ways to mitigate this, mind you, and I could be better at it. I'm not saying I am. I'm, you know, even before the pandemic, I worked from home. So prior to the pandemic though, I did actually start implementing practices of like going and working at a coffee shop or something just to try to work on his FOMO. But then the pandemic hit and that just all went out the window, so. So yeah, personality. Then you have Lotus who doesn't actually have the separation anxiety so much. He's very reactive. Unfortunately, that can be seen as aggressive because it looks aggressive. Done tests with him, it's not. We've had professional trainers look at him. It's not aggression, but it's still not good. And it's still a very big problem that I have to contend with every time we go out somewhere. And it's kind of like Enzo with his FOMO, like Lotus will listen. Honestly, of the two of them, Lotus is the better trained. He is like a pleaser. He will do whatever you ask him to do. And he will do it quickly and he will do it so perfectly. But when he's in that reactive fear state, yeah, I mean, it's kind of like, you know, it's the it's same with like Enzo and his FOMO. Like you just never, quite know what's going to happen. You have to take extra precautions. He's also medicated because of that with um, Prozac, which has been working phenomenal for him. It's not like he's cured, but huge, huge improvements. I'm doing okay. 
You do okay, Bubba? Oh my goodness. Now, if you've seen my videos, you know I take them everywhere. You know, I always say they go where I go. And I love that. But keep in mind that there's a few issues. One is they're bigger dogs. They're they're louder. You have a Pomeranian and you take it to the park and it's just barking at everything under the sun. It's annoying, but people are like, whatever. Like it's a little, little yappy dog. It's fine. If you have a shepherd that's doing that, people take notice and they're afraid. It doesn't help that because they are so easily trained and can be trained so well that they are frequently used in police and military. So they get a bad rap as being aggressive when really it has nothing to do with them being aggressive, it has to do with how trainable they are. So you will find things that even if like Enzo, Enzo is, he loves all other dogs. He just wants to play. I have old videos of him running, like when we would run across other dogs at the park, oh, just having a blast, loves it. But I've had plenty of experiences where other dog people see us and see Enzo and they're just like, no. And they just like go the other way because they're afraid and that sucks. You know, they're being prejudged and yeah, I mean, that just, you know, be mindful of that. You know, if you go to the dog park, if you go, you have, you have live in a small community, like apartment communities, things like that, people are gonna be afraid of them and they're loud. Even Enzo's happy bark, Enzo has a happy bark and it's so loud and it scares people so much. It scares them so much, Baba. And it's literally like I'm cracking up because I just know that's just his like, oh my gosh, I'm so happy bark, but it scares people. <sighs> Fun fact, I've only heard his mean bark, I think three times. And like you feel it in your stomach when it happens. Like it's, yeah. Wow, Baba. You in the upside down? You in the upside down world? Okay. <sighs> We have two more quick issues and then the one that I just recently learned. First is shedding. <sighs> Lots of dogs shed, but shepherds, they might be the worst, I don't know. Um, it's bad. Uh, many of Roombas have lost their lives to having to deal with shepherds. Like I make a lot of jokes about it, but honestly, it was an adjustment. Like it could be so frustrating. Like I remember when we got our first cat, oh my gosh, they shed so much, there's so much hair. Now it's just like comical. I can brush Rally and hold all the fur in, in my hand. You know, I'm over it now, I've gotten past it, but it gets everywhere. If you just wanna take them to the park, throw them in your backseat of your car or go to the vet or anything like, you're gonna have to vacuum your car afterwards. It's gonna be bad. That's probably like the least deal breaker one, but I could totally see that being like, something to consider for sure. I vacuum every day. Other thing is, and I'm only gonna talk on this quickly, health issues. Shepherds have a lot of known health issues around their hips especially, and no dog lives long enough, but shepherds aren't winning any life expectancy race. So, <sighs> yeah, I try not to think about that one too much, but just be mindful of that. As I mentioned in the beginning, I've had them. Lotus just turned five, Enzo seven. I learned something new very recently that I didn't realize. And that is while shepherds, in my opinion, are not an aggressive breed, they are actually, I think a lot due to ignorance, listed as an aggressive breed in some places. It's not uncommon for pit bulls to be listed as aggressive, which I think they get a bad rap too. I don't know a whole lot about them, but from what little bit I know, I suspect it has mostly to do with humans and less to do with the dog, but I don't know. But shepherds, I've found that when looking at places that I wanna go, they'll say like dog friendly and, but then they'll list like certain breeds and shepherds are actually on there. Or sometimes they'll just list it based on weight. And it's like, Enzo doesn't ever fit that group. So it's like, but like Enzo and Lotus are the same breed. And it's just like, well, that's not fair. The reason this could be like a huge deal breaker is some of the places that I found do this are apartment communities. So yeah, that could be the very place that you're living right now just straight up may not allow them. So definitely need to research that. I really hope you got a lot out of this. If you want to comment below, I'm happy to answer any questions that I can. You can always DM me on Instagram as well. Otherwise, I appreciate you all as always, and we will see you on the next one. Later.